As an Amazon associate, we earn from qualifying purchases. This podcast is supported by its listeners. If you choose to purchase something using links on our website, we may earn a commission. No books were warped, dog-eared, underlined with purple pen, eaten, cursed, cancelled, burned or otherwise harmed in the making of this podcast. I'm Tom Tolkien and this is The School Reading List, a podcast that recommends books you'll want your children to read and books you'll wish you'd read as a child. And to kick off episode 8 of the School Reading List podcast, let's rip open some book post. Art and Joy, Best Friends Forever by Danielle Kreiser. This one's from Prestel and it comes out in March. Aimed at five to nine-year-olds, Art and Joy love to try new things, explore their creativity and experiment. But when the art bully appears, seeds of doubt and insecurity are sown. Witty and full of fun, this is a joyful book with a positive message that will inspire children in Key Stage 1 and Lower Key Stage 2. Be sure to purchase a pack of googly eyes and be prepared for your children to see sweet cucumbers in a whole new light. The Way of Dog by Zaina Fralin, illustrated by Sean Buckingham. Carnegie Award-nominated Zaina Fralin returns with this startlingly inventive first novel. When orphaned puppy Scruffity finds himself alone, he begins a quest to find somewhere to call home. Imbued with resilience, grit, determination and the power of friendship, this is a rewarding text to read alongside classics such as The Call of the Wild and Watership Down. The shorter texts and evocative illustrations are also perfect for inspiring less confident upper primary aged and lower secondary aged readers. And this one's our March non-fiction book of the month. It's Engineers Making a Difference. Inventors, technicians, scientists and tech entrepreneurs changing the world and how you can join them by Dr. Shiny Samora, and this one's from What on Earth Books. Celebrating engineering, this cracking hardback introduces 12-plus-year-old readers to 46 fascinating engineers at different points in their careers. As part of a collaboration with the publisher What on Earth Books and the Gatsby Charitable Foundation, Imperial College London will be sending two free copies to every UK state secondary school. With bold graphics, bright engaging colours and an accessible style with text broken into bite-sized chunks. This book is packed with information, fax files and QR codes that lead to further learning. This book is a magnificent achievement, highly recommended. Mm. And from Gecko Press, Kind Crocodile by Leo Timmers. When a good-hearted crocodile ventures away from the ponds to explore, the other animals are very scared. But each animal soon sees a different side to this friendly crocodile. A very clever and stylish picture book, the charming illustrations are filled with expression and character. Great to encourage inference and questioning skills with younger children, Kind Crocodile is a wonderful book to read and share over and over again with children under three. And from Templar Books, this is a wonderful picture book for 0-5 to year olds, I Say Oh, You Say No by John Kane. The third in a series, this clever call-and-response story will make nursery story times come alive. The disco colours, funky typography and 11 mentions of the word but will make this wildly fun and interactive picture book a hit with EYFS classes and younger children. And next up is a fantastic picture book for children aged 4 plus from Templar Books, The Fixer of Broken Things by Julia Patton. 
B loves to fix things, but one day she comes up against something she cannot mend, and this story follows her as she makes use of friendship, support, and cooperation to resolve a problem. With fascinating detailed illustrations, clever typography, diverse characters, and accessible text, this book will inspire younger minds. The Fixer of Broken Things is an inspirational text for children who yearn to know about how things work, and it's highly recommended for children in EYFS and Key Stage 1. The Bear and the Wildcat by Kazumi Yumoto and Komoko Sakai. And this one's from Gecko Press. When the little bird dies, a bear is beside himself with grief at the loss of his friend in this moving picture book. Dealing with loneliness, grief and loss with great sensitivity, the bear and the wildcat highlights the positives of remembrance and hope. A modern classic, this is a memorable book to read and revisit. The clever and fleeting use of colour amongst the atmospheric monochrome illustrations is particularly impressive. Prehistoric Beasts by Dean Lomax and Mike Love Packed with information in an accessible and engaging format, children aged 5 plus won't be able to get enough of this spectacular hardback. Behold the awe and wonder as children peer behind the flaps and unfurl a 3D prehistoric horned elephant, a toothy shark leaping from the page, a tree-hugging sloth, a dragonfly with flapping wings, a bone-crunching alligator mid-bite, and Waddle, an expert penguin-related fish catcher. Highly recommended. And this one's from Little Tiger for children aged 7 plus, a wonderful adventure, Tourmaline and the Island of Elsewhere by Ruth Lauren. When intrepid Tourmaline sets out to find her missing archaeologist's mother, she stumbles upon a fantasy land with talking fauna and Captain Violet's crew of pirates. Are they all searching for the same thing? With strong and relatable female characters, a compelling plot, and immersive fantasy settings, this imaginative middle-grade novel is unputdownable. The eye-catching cover, complete with a sparkling silver finish, is absolutely stunning and will leap out from your library displays. Highly recommended. (laughs) Dandy the Highway Lion by Stephanie Sorrell from Chicken House Books. This is a wonderful 1920s London period adventure for 9 to 11 year olds. With a lustrous flowing mane and immaculately attired in a well-cut tailcoat and red cravat, Mr Dandy Paws robs people who are cruel to animals with a suave panache. But in masterminding a breakout at Tower Zoo, he might have bitten off more than he can chew. With richly characterful talking animals, quirky snippets of 1920s London period history and whimsical illustrations, 9 to 12 year olds will be enthralled. And of course, Dandy deserves a sequel. Mm. And from Hotkey Books, this is a gritty realistic crime drama for 12 plus year olds. Crossing the Line by Tia Fisher. Written in verse, this gritty and visceral narrative follows teenaged Eric who juggles a difficult home life, schoolwork and the consequences of being groomed by and owing money to a dangerous County Lions gang. Crossing the Line is a memorable story of manipulation that will be useful to read and discuss alongside anti-exploitation resources in PSHE and book clubs. Highly recommended for Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4. Ellie Pillai is almost in love by Christina Pelena Yagam. This light-hearted yet heartbreaking teen rom-com blends idealised young love with the confusing truths of reality and teases the reader into wondering if love and all it entails is really worth it. The use of QR codes to create an instant smartphone soundtrack is an interesting and innovative touch. Thank you to all the publishers and publicists for sending us books to review here on this podcast. 
and on our website schoolreadinglist.co.uk. Here's our rundown of great new children's books hitting the shelves this March. Boy Like Me by Simon James Green Raven Cave by Marcus Sedgwick What the World Doesn't See by Mel Darbin Circus Maximus Rider of the Storm by Annalise Gray Tourmaline and the Island of Elsewhere by Ruth Loren Big Nate Nailed It by Lincoln Pierce Prehistoric Beasts by Dean Lomax Sheets by Brenna Thumler The Way of Dog by Zaina Fralin Catfish Rolling by Clara Kumargai Dragon Races by Peter Bunzel Maggie Blue and the White Crow by Anna Goodall being You, Poems of Positivity by Daniel Thompson The Truth Detective by Tim Hartford The Other E.D. Trimmer by Jacqueline Wilson The Handbook of Forgotten Skills by Natalie Crowley and Elaine Baptiste Stanley's Secret by John Sullivan The Nowhere Thief by Alice M. Ross the Knowing by Anna DeFranco Dick the Delightful Duck by Kay Umansky The Autistic Guide to Adventure by Ali Mason Habitats of the World by Dorling Kindersley Wild Song by Candy Gourlay The Rook and the Weary Weary by Sophia Payne Engineers Making a Difference by Dr. Shiny Samara Ellie Palai is Almost in Love by Christine Helena Yagam Dogman 11 by Dav Pilkey Courage Out Loud by Joseph Colo Hell Breaks Loose by Derek Landy Crossing the Line by Tia Fisher Football Rules the World by Simon Mugford And our picture book of the month is Kind Crocodile by Leo Timmers Our non-fiction book of the month is Engineers Making a Difference by Dr Shiny Samara And our fiction book of the month is The Way of Dog by Zaina Fraley Bookity book, let's get reading If you're a teacher, librarian or avid bookworm who loves children's or YA books and you'd like to review brand new titles for the school reading list, get in touch by email. We'd love to hear from you. The address is reviews at schoolreadinglist.co.uk. In this next segment, I'm going to take a look at how the toxic combination of the cost of living crisis and lockdown is impacting reading, particularly in primary age children. Parents aren't spending money on books their lockdown generation children don't want to read. The children who did read in lockdown, now 11 to 16 years old, and also those who were unaffected by the lack of in-person schooling in lockdown, now aged zero to four years old, are propping up the children's book sale market. According to our observations, the seven to 11-year-old market has been shrinking over the last year. 
and anecdotal feedback from fellow teachers suggests that the current cohort of 5 to 10 year olds who missed out on a significant portion of formal reading education is reading less, is arguably more reluctant to read challenging material, and is resistant to and lacks confidence in reading comprehension assessments, and they prefer familiar texts to return to and reread. Combine all this with the cost of living crisis in which everything is being squeezed, and parents aren't spending money on books when their 5 to 11 year olds aren't interested. It's not just books either. Magazines aimed at upper primary school students have seen a drop in readership, whereas those aimed at or read by infants and early teens have held steady. World Book Day in 2023 is a prime example of this trend. World Book Day events, books, sales and school involvement have traditionally targeted children aged 5 to 10. Despite this, the bookseller reports that whilst World Book Day sales increased overall, children's market sales fell compared to the previous week in 2022. The titles aimed at the younger and older ends of the children's market performed best, but those aimed at 5-7 to seven year olds and 7-9 to nine year olds, which were squarely in the lockdown learning hit age groups, did not. And this isn't just this country. Similar trends have been reported in the United States by the New York Times and World's Rated, highlighting a learning deficit and also a 9.45% drop in children's book sales in 2022, which is expected to continue into 2023. What can we as educators and teachers do about this? Don't put up a fight. Increase your students' self-esteem. Gradually improve children's reading skills by providing a variety of options, choice, reading for pleasure, and ensure that your school has increased access to books and adequate coverage throughout the school. Make books available everywhere a child moves through your school and at all times during the school year. Classroom libraries, posters on the wall, books in assembly, video read-alouds on computers, audiobooks, stories at the end of the day, a well-stocked school library, books sent home every night, making time to hear all the children read and giving children as much time as they need to choose a book to read. This is what we should be focusing on. Allow all school stakeholders access to books during the school year. This might include book fairs and author events, but also book swaps, book donation drives, used book sales, open school library sessions, and at all times involving your PTA. Hold book tasting sessions for children on a regular basis, not just in the classroom and the school library, but also in assemblies, peer group reading sessions, and mixed age paired reading. Use reading ambassadors or reading prefects to promote great books throughout their key stage or year group. Place book taster blurbs or posters in your newsletters and communications that are sent home to parents. Look for books with high interest, short bursts of text, such as books by What on Earth Books Publishing, Flying Eye, Big Picture Press, Buster Books, Neon Squid, Quest Friends and Be Small Publishing. And also look at magazines such as Aquila and Britannica magazine to engage children who've missed out on those key reading experiences during lockdown. Encourage higher order thinking skills by using imaginative and thought-provoking picture books. In both primary and secondary school, get students talking about books and sharing their book choices. Consider creating children's book wish list templates for your students to complete to keep their reading in focus. Give children opportunities to think about which books they really want to read, as well as opportunities for parents to learn about which books will be of long-term interest to their children. Try to get past that impulse buy supermarket trolley experience. 
Send home more than just reading strategies and book recommendations. Inform your parents about all the good local independent bookstores in the area, as well as all of the free community library services and how to get access to them. It's amazing how many parents have no idea what's on their doorstep. Think about running presentations for parents either before or after school to highlight reading opportunities and develop regular reading assemblies to pinpoint your school's reading expectations to the wider school community. Register your entire class at the local library. If you don't know how, ask your local librarian to come to school or arrange for your class to go direct to the library. Children who sign up will have access to BorrowBox or Overdrive for free ebook loans and audiobooks, as well as Press Reader for free magazines and newspapers. Also, take full advantage of your school's library service, whether it's through loan boxes, mobile library vans, advice, librarian visits, or staff insets. Encourage middle grade reading for pleasure throughout Key Stage 3 before introducing more challenging texts in early secondary. Reading often drops off after years 7 and 8, but if you go to great lengths to ensure it doesn't, the gap that we've seen develop in primary could be closed gradually throughout the student's secondary years. For librarians and school libraries in general, a big push on reading for pleasure after year 8 will be critical. Find opportunities for your students to read that don't seem like reading. Kindles, games with a significant amount of reading content, maps, guides, catalogues, brochures, aspirational things to dream about. Get your pupils reading about things they look forward to. Above all, Whatever your educational setting, if your student's reading is suffering from the after-effects of lockdown and the cost-of-living crisis, find ways to consolidate and build reading confidence in primary and early secondary children before trying to encourage them to tackle more challenging reading texts. And keep plugging away with your book plugging. Around every corner of your school, there should be a book waiting to be read. Here's a selection of exciting new book tasters sent to us by new and self-published children's authors this month. Has your child's attitude to learning become a little concerning? Watch him fully engage on every page with the bumper book of double learning. Double learning? What's that? Double learning means you learn two things at the same time. For example, you read about the solar system, then use information from the text to calculate percentages. After learning about word types, you read a text about human evolution. Then, through the text, you identify nouns, adjectives, verbs and adverbs. Whilst learning about prepositions, you learn about the human digestive system, and so on. With geography, science, religion and history, jokes, puzzles, games and a murder mystery, all the English and maths a child needs to be learning is in the bumper book of double learning. For more information, go to helenjbailey.co.uk or check out the reviews on Amazon, Waterstones and Goodreads. Dumb Orphans, the Bundu Bunch Trilogy is a novel based on the real lives of survivors of the most deadly global pandemic of our time. A group of left behind and left alone orphans of the HIV AIDS pandemic in Southern Africa are called dumb by others in their community. They struggle to overcome this label and unfair treatment by their community headman. Love Reading for Kids Ambassador has said, through the plot line of the different stories, there's a gentle introduction to discussion of poverty, international aid, immigration and refugees and more. With illustrations depicting key scenes, this represents an easy way to introduce these topics for younger readers. An online book club reviewer has said, this book is an inspiring story every teenager should read. It should be included 
in the list of literary texts for schools. My Magical Bearded Friend is a wonderful new picture book written by Chris Husband. With rhyming words and an engaging vocabulary, with an amusing and whimsical tone, it will help even the most hesitant children work on their reading skills. The engaging and imaginative illustrations will entice children to look upon them again and again. These, along with the nocturnal theme, will ensure My Magical Bearded Friend will become a firm favourite at bedtime. You can buy My Magical Bearded Friend online at Amazon and Barnes and & Noble or log on to the website chrishusband.com And here's a more in-depth monologue from Rebecca Smith, Learning and Participation Manager for the Cheltenham Festival's Reading Teachers Equals Reading Pupils project. Hello, I'm Rebecca Smith. I'm one of the Learning and Participation Managers at Cheltenham Festivals and I manage Reading Teachers Equals Reading Pupils, a national network of teachers' book groups who read high-quality and diverse children's literature to ignite the spark of reading for pleasure in teachers and through them, their pupils. Today I'm going to talk to you about what Reading Teachers Equals Reading Pupils, or RTRP, is, the pedagogy behind it and how you can get involved. Fewer children are reading for pleasure daily now than in previous years, and the number is still decreasing, with Farshaw predicting that only one quarter of 8-10 to year olds will be reading daily by 2025. Statistics like this are concerning, as the evidence that reading for pleasure is important is vast, and I'm not just talking about the correlation to progress in academic literacy levels, though of course that's part of it. In 2013, Sullivan and Brown found that reading for pleasure was actually more important for children's cognitive development than their parents' level of education and was a more powerful factor in life achievement than socioeconomic background. That's why at Cheltenham Festivals, we believe that reading is a social justice issue. RTRP reaches children in the most deprived areas of the UK, providing them with books and connections to authors and their teachers with the inspiration to bring reading to life in the classroom. In 2018, the PISA study found that teacher enthusiasm and stimulation of reading engagement were the practices most strongly associated with students' enjoyment of reading. And we've seen firsthand that when teachers are inspired, children are inspired, and when teachers read, children read. RTRP was set up in 2016 by Chantman Festival's now co-CEO, Ali Moore. Ali's mission was to provide teachers with a network, a community of like-minded peers with whom they could discuss the best of contemporary children's publishing and learn to see themselves as readers before going back into the classroom, equipped with the knowledge, understanding and confidence required to inspire children to see themselves as readers. In 2022 alone, there were over 10,000 children's books published, but teachers are more time poor than ever before. There's no way teachers have time to read and carefully select the very best the publishing industry has to offer all year, every year. So that's why RTRP recruits an expert panel for each key stage to choose five books to be discussed across each academic year. Of these five books, three will be published in the last two years, one at any time, and one will be a picture book or graphic novel. RTRP is delivered in partnership with 12 like-minded organisations across the UK. Books Council of Wales, the Centre for Literacy and Primary Education, or CLPE, the English and Media Centre, National Literacy Trust, the National Centre for Writing, Peters, Bradford Literature Festival, Keep and the Writer's Block, Seven Stories, the National Centre for Children's Books, The Reader, the Story Museum and Wigtown Festival Company. And it would not be possible without our funders. You can find a full list of our current funders on the Cheltenham Festival's website. All these strategic partners run their own RTRP groups in addition to the six groups Cheltenham Festivals run in Gloucestershire. The RTRP year starts in October with a launch event. This is where all the teachers and school librarians in a group come together for the first time to find out what the first book of the year is going to be. In Gloucestershire, we host our launch event at the Times and the Sunday Times Cheltenham Literature Festival and unveil our Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 3 texts with the authors present to introduce their book. Our strategic partners host their launches around the country throughout October and early November. All RTRP book groups then run five sessions between November and June, with the next book being unveiled at each meeting. We provide teachers in our groups with two free copies of each book, The idea being they keep one for themselves and are able to immediately use one in the classroom. 
between late June and early July, all RTRP groups will host a sharing session for their teachers, which is a chance to reflect on the year. Any changes in their classroom practice, share stories of transformation in particular students, and celebrate changes to their whole school reading for pleasure culture as a result of RTRP. Regarding the impact of RTRP, you don't need to take my word for it. I'm going to share with you two case studies now. One of a teacher who didn't see herself as a reader before joining RTRP, and one who has transformed her whole school's approach to reading for pleasure. This is Fran's story. I began RTRP when I moved from teaching in Key Stage 1 to Upper Key Stage 2. With a background in maths and physics, I had not been a keen reader since reading Harry Potter as a child, and had no knowledge of current children's literature. By the end of my first year on the project, I had read not only the five books through the group, but also many recommendations from other teachers. The knowledge gained supported me to champion reading for pleasure in my classroom, before becoming the English lead and championing it across the school. The project continues to inspire and influence my practice, and is having the same effect on my colleagues in the programme now too. Stories like this are really typical within the first year or two of joining an RTRP group, as teachers flex their reading for pleasure muscles that they haven't used since they were children, or have maybe never accessed before. Now this is Kat's story. On a rainy Thursday afternoon, at the end of a busy summer term, my deputy head asked if I wanted to take part in Reading Teachers Equals Reading Pupils. I knew nothing about it, but had always loved reading, although did very little of it as an adult. I signed up and thought nothing more of it. I was at a crossroads with my teaching career. I'd just returned to working full-time after being part-time while my children were young. I'd been given PHAC to lead, an important role within school, but not one I was passionate about. And I was unsure if I still wanted to teach and was a little lost. Then, in October 2017, I attended the RTRP launch event and listened to the wonderful Ross McKenzie. I was hooked. The next year reignited my passion for reading and also teaching. I was on a journey with my class and loved discovering all the wonderful children's literature out there. The programme had a huge impact on my class and also on me. My passion and drive for reading led to being asked to be reading lead and then invited onto SLT. We now welcome teachers from all over the county to share our passion for reading. The RTRP books are at the core of our reading spine and we welcome authors into school from the programme. Those relationships with authors have been key to driving forward a love of reading. As part of our Reading for Pleasure offer, we now have a book vending machine, and all rewards in the school centre around reading. We started a mini in-school literature festival, and we've welcomed Anjali Ralph, Vashti Hardy, Carl Nova and Kieran Larwood, to name a few. We now have a school patron of reading, the brilliant Tracy Corduroy, who visits our school lots and supports us with all things reading. We have an outdoor reading shed with books that represent every child at our school. We introduce reading ambassadors, students whose role is to promote a love of reading. We produce a Reading Rocks newsletter published half-termly and we even host weekly reading assemblies. RTRP has had a lasting legacy at my school. So there's evidence that it works, but why? Well, the first reason is, as I mentioned before, we know from research that when teachers read, children read. But the second reason is the pedagogical model on which RTRP is based, and that's Aidan Chambers' book, Tell Me, Children Reading and Talk, and the Reading Environment. For those who haven't read it, Tell Me is an approach to book talk which is non-hierarchical in nature, and positions the teacher and child both as critical learners with agency. The model empowers children and their teachers to engage in shared contemplation about a text, by exploring likes, dislikes, puzzles, and patterns. RTRP then asked teachers to consider how they would hook a reader in and what creative outputs, including writing, they might engage with in the classroom related to this particular text. CF groups and strategic partner groups also create a set of notes on each book that all teachers in the programme have access to and can use as a valuable resource to inform their literacy planning. It's common for RTRP teachers to throw out older, overused texts in their curriculums and reading spines in favour of RTRP choices. In addition, in 2021, Cheltenham Festivals launched the Reading Teachers Equals Reading Pupils Conference, a full day of CPD for teachers and school librarians offering a holistic approach to supporting children to read for pleasure, and featuring keynotes from authors, academics and experienced teachers. In 2022, our conference included keynotes from Emma Carroll, Darren Chetty and SF Said. Our 2023 programme will be announced on our website on the 30th of May. If you want to get involved in RTRP, you have options depending on where you live. You could choose to apply to attend one of our CF-led groups or a strategic partner group if you live nearby. 
A full map of current RTRP group locations is available on the Cheltenham Festival's website. Alternatively, if you don't live near a current group, you're very welcome to become what we call an independent partner and start your own RTRP group. Cheltenham Festivals provide you with a handbook, branding, the book list, the pedagogical model and full training, enabling you to set up an RTRP teacher's book group in your school or trust completely for free. So there you have it. Now you know what reading teachers equals reading pupils is, what pedagogical model we follow and how to get involved. If you'd like any more information about the programme or the work of Cheltenham Festivals, then please visit our website at www.cheltenhamfestivals.com slash rtrp or email us at education at cheltenhamfestivals.com. Goodbye and keep reading. If you'd like to get in touch and leave a recorded shout-out about your upcoming self-published children's book, have a look at our podcast webpage for more details. The most recent in-depth feature on our website is our new page on poetry books for 7 to 11 year olds. And let's dive a little deeper into these great books. And from our selection of poetry anthologies for children aged 7 to 11, we have Michael Rosen's A to Z, Happy Poems chosen by Roger McGough, and Poems Aloud, an anthology by Joseph Colo and Daniel Gray Barnett. And let's pick out this one by Rachel Piercy and Emma Deanne Knight. The Head That Wears a Crown This anthology contains shape poetry, rhyming couplets, conversation poems, blank verse, ballads and narrative verse, making it ideal as a springboard for creative writing and literacy instruction. The work of poets such as Melanie Branton, Rebecca Colby, Laura Moocher and Brian Moses span a wide range of tones and styles. And every poem in this anthology is one about a king or a queen, making it ideal to complement your history topics in Key Stage 2. And amongst the contemporary poetry collection titles, we have this one that's new from Simon Lamb and Chris Riddell. A Passing On of Shells, 50 Word Poems. Basketball, Mysteries, A Scribble, Caring for Fallen Stars and Poetry Itself are just some of the subjects of this diverse collection of observational and inspirational wordplay poetry. With eye-catching illustrations and a sheer variety of forms, these 50 poems will be a goldmine for Key Stage 2 classrooms and teachers. And this one comes highly recommended from Zara Wheel, Cherry Moon, Little Poems, Big Ideas, Mindful of Nature. This award-winning nature poetry collection sparkles with creativity, verve and imagination. Key Stage 2 readers will love the short accessible poems featuring beast doodles, preposterous penguins and humble fleas. Teachers will love the sheer variety, including shape poems, lists, haiku, riddles, and conversation poems. And at the end of the book, there's a raft of useful writing prompts to use in class or for students to try at home. Highly recommended. Mm. An Imaginary Menagerie by Roger McGough. With fun wordplay, homonyms, puns and rhymes, an imaginary menagerie is perfect for literacy teaching in years three and four. Teachers will remember this collection fondly from their childhoods or early teaching careers, and children will love the wordplay, rhymes and sense of humour. Aunt Eater is a particular favourite. Great for modelling poetry in Key Stage 2 and sparking ideas for animal-related topic work, this is a cracking collection of lively and fun animal poems for 7 to 11-year-olds. And amongst the classics in this list, we have Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats by T.S. Eliot, Silly Verse for Kids by Spike Milligan, Collected Poems for Children by Ted Hughes, and this one by Alan Arberg, Heard It in the Playground. A funny illustrated collection of poems and songs about primary school life. These timeless poems reflect situations many teachers will have seen and experienced, including Billy McBone, 
the mad professor's daughter, a longest kiss contest. There's plenty of variety here to engage a key stage two class in this collection that's perfect to dip into at the end of the school day. There's also the Mrs. Butler blues to perhaps mime subversively in staff meetings. To have a look at these and the other 30 odd poetry collections in this list, go to our website and look for the page on poetry books for 7 to 11 year olds. All these titles are available to buy from bookshop.org.uk, which supports local independent bookshops. If you'd like to get in touch, use the hashtag SRLpodcast on Twitter or drop us a line using the contact form or messaging button on our website schoolreadinglist.co.uk. And all the books lived happily ever after. The End